Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Classic Moments. I'm Bruce Howard. Our series on the 2017 Hall of Fame class includes now the Hall of Fame honor team, the 1982 football squad that was almost unbeaten. They went 10 and 1. They were underrated and also uninvited. They did not get a bull bid, if you can believe that. Here's a look at the 1982 football team. The 1982 TU football team was looking to build on the success of the previous five years under head coach John Cooper, and the coach knew they could be good. We were a physical team. We were a team that uh, you had to beat us. We didn't beat ourselves. Uh, I loved that team. that team. That team worked as hard as any team I ever coached. The 82 team was a gritty team. We didn't have the best athletes in the world. We were well coached. We all worked together, whether it was offense, defense, special teams, and uh, we just enjoyed each other. 1982 was a, a, the epitome of a team. We're a bunch of guys. Cooper was real good about recruiting three-star guys, farm kids, blue-collar kids. And, but we, we literally moved as a team. Uh, I just remember the team as a whole being fairly united, a fairly united group. Uh, not just the offense, but also both sides of the ball. In game one, TU drilled the Air Force Academy by 18 points, but then came a game in Fayetteville against Arkansas and the 13th ranked Razorbacks, a 38 to nothing wake up call. But after the game, I think that's only, we, we made the coaches leave the, the locker room. And it's one of those, this is my senior year, we're on to something. Everybody, we're going back, we're going to work. You know, everybody just came together and said, hey, there's no more of this going on. You know, for whatever the Arkansas game did to us, you know, who didn't do things right. We all said nobody did anything right. You know, let's step it up. We did have some meetings without the coaches and so forth. You know, after losing the way we lost, you know, hey, we had a, we had a meeting ourselves. This is it. We're not gonna get beat like this again. Everybody keep their mouth shut. We're gonna put in the time. We're gonna put in the grind. And you should have seen that next eight days, I guess so was you. We were at, it was gladiator time. Yes, it was Oklahoma State next at Skelly Stadium on a Sunday night. It was a tough physical struggle with the Hurricane holding a 12-0 early lead, but after OSU took the lead, the Hurricane roaring back to take a 19-15 lead with this Michael Gunner long TD jaunt. And with TU leading by four, OSU drove to the three-yard line first and goal with the Cowboys looking to retake the lead. If the goal line stands, it was a first down. Each time they ran it with Ernest Anderson, I jammed the, I jammed the tight end, took on the load block, took on the, took on the ball carry. They stopped him four straight times inside the five, and then uh, Coach Coker got it. A little bit of matching. After an illegal procedure penalty set TU back to the one yard line, wide receiver Keith Estes brought the play call into the huddle. What I remembered it to be called was a 129 mm, post. I can't remember all of it, but I do remember that. It was a play action pass. What? And, you know, I just, <laughs> you know, what did he just call? And you know how it was just like, okay. And I remember the defensive guy catching the ball and kind of bobbling it and then just kind of taking it away from him and, and running. And running as fast as I could, as far as I could until I got knocked out of bounds. That set Tulsa up in position for a field goal by Stu Crum. And an interception then by the TU defense by John Cooper set up yet another field goal by Crum. And the Golden Hurricane had knocked off OSU 25 to 15. Uh, this, game, this game meant an awful lot to us. So, and we were the best team that day. We were the best team. I remember we took, I think we ran a 15, 17 play drive against them. They couldn't stop us. So I think, again, I think we were the better team. It was complete jubilation because I said, we're going to shut their mouths, first of all. I said, you know, they thought they were bigger, they were better. We beat them. It gave us confidence, you know, after coming off the Arkansas loss, it gave us confidence that we maybe we did have a better team than we initially thought. Uh, what the Oklahoma State game meant to us uh, after we got that accomplished was we put the confidence back in and said, here we go, let's, let's, get, let's keep on moving. Let's just don't look back. We had great coaches, we had players. We just had to make it work and it, it, and it was a great win. Then it was another Big 8 team, Kansas, in Lawrence. And although the Hurricane dominated with their running game, it was tied 7-7 at halftime. We come out at halftime, Bob Hope. We're talking Bob Hope. So me and Ives, the center, Ives looking at me goes, let's go get a picture with Bob Hope. 
That's Bob Hope. I mean, for us at that time in our era, Bob Hope, you know, he's the homecoming guy. Yeah, I want to say, I want to meet Bob Hope also. You know, so we all see Bob Hope and so forth. And it's, only, yeah, you know, so it was a big deal for us. And we're getting our picture. And the, and the head referee screaming at us, get over here, he's going to throw a flag. And I'm going to look at the referee and he goes, throw the flag. Bob Hope, yelling this, you know. <laughs> and Cooper comes over, what are you doing? And he threw a flag for the delay of game. And Dave the whole time just, Bob Hope. Man, <laughs> just, so anyway, and KU's all upset because you could tell they just been tore up. So a flag was thrown for delay of game, but that didn't stop Tulsa. Whether it was Bob Hope or an upset coach Cooper that got Tulsa going, TU rolled on the way to a win in Lawrence, and now the Hurricane was two and one with wins over two big eight schools. But I remember uh, Tulsa World at one point, somebody had, had, had a uh, cartoon drawing it. It said, uh, you know, big eight standings, and they had us listed like two and oh. <laughs> which I thought was pretty cute. And then it was off to the Missouri Valley Conference. The Golden Hurricane clearly the best team. I think at that point, uh, the University of Tulsa was quite a bit better than most of the other teams in the Missouri Valley. I, I think the fact that we won several years there in a row, I can't remember how many years we won after that in the Missouri Valley, but uh, we seemed to dominate. No, they were scared, they were scared of us. They were literally, think about it. Like you said, two and all in the big eight, on a roll. And we literally lined up. The way we played, I mean, they were beat. TU would steamroll the MVC, going 6-0 and with the closest game, a nine-point victory over Wichita State. What made Tulsa so good in 1982? First of all, head coach John Cooper. Coach Cooper is a mix between Bear Bryant, all right, and Lou Holtz. He loved Bear Bryant in 1982. Coach Cooper all of a sudden started rolling a scaffold down onto the field during practice. And I think he liked uh, Lou Holtz because Lou Holtz was so straight laced and he, he got things done. He admired those two guys immensely. Coach Cooper uh, treated you like a man. John Cooper was interesting. He was the only coach I had as a head coach, which is kind of unique because you don't see that a lot anymore. The same head coach, same offensive coordinator. You get a lot of continuity and repetition, and so you understand what they're trying to do a lot better. Cooper was real good about let the, let the strongest man win, let the battle begin. If you got a fight, Cooper backed off. We had a punter one time beat the crap out of a DN, choking him out, and Cooper's down there leaning in his ear going, um, you want me to get the uh, punter off you? Some of the practices in 82 could get heated at times, but that was, you know, guys wanting to be better, guys trying to make each other better. And on game day, we were all on the same side, had each other's back. You were not going to outcondition Coach Cooper's teams. That's what you wasn't going to do, okay? Now, you might be more, you might have better talent, but you were not going to outcondition us. And, you know, our guys, we didn't lay down for anybody. We did not. Well, he trained us the four quarter. You know, give me, <laughs> we just getting started. You know, this game, and you just look across, you see those teams, it's going, dang, there's no, there's no quit in us. And it was a relentless running attack that carried Tulsa's offense, operated by Skip Ast and Scott Brown, the quarterbacks, but spearheaded by the offensive line and Ken Lacey and Michael Gunner, the Palomino Express. Those guys both gained over a thousand yards rushing that year in the same backfield, didn't get hurt, didn't fumble, uh, loved each other. Uh, ran, again, ran the offense. Uh, those guys are great football players. To me, Michael was a little bit of a more of a, a cutter. He would go in and make moves and, and move the ball up and down the field that way. Ken Lacey was just a power runner, ran straight at you, run over you, and, and was pretty fast. That's what I remember him being. They complimented each other well. They blocked for each other well. And of course, there was a stout Golden Hurricane defense that gave Tulsa a chance to win almost every game. Our 82 defense was gritty. We, we were tenacious. We didn't mind hitting people. You know, we, we would give it to you just as much as you gave it to us. And we didn't back down from anybody. Good solid, good solid defense. Well coached, played hard, ran to the ball, forced turnovers, a very, very good tackling team, open field tackling team. I remember that our defense was very tough because you, you spent too much time in practice with them. And, uh, getting hit many a time. 
For all the success this team had, its biggest disappointment was despite a 10-1 season, none of the 16 bowls at the time decided to invite Tulsa. Can you believe that? <laughs> I mean, we're 10-1. I, I felt bad for the players. I really did. The players, the players earned it. The players deserved to go to, to a major bowl game, not just a bowl game, to, to a major bowl game. We felt like we were shafted uh, considerably. I mean, you win 10 games, you're, 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 you're ranked in the country. We were ranked in the country at the time. You know, you sort of threw your arms up and go, well, yeah, you know, it's out of our control. And uh, I mean, that's pretty much probably the way everybody looked at it. Three, four teams got bowl games, we did. And it all come down to the anything we could kind of sell the tickets that need to be sold. And don't get me wrong, that's justifiable. You know, they got cheated. I look back and it, uh, that was wrong. So the legacy of the 1982 football team is almost unbeaten, uninvited, but now inducted into the TU Hall of Fame. What it means to me uh, is, wow, you know, <clears throat> really, it's like, can you believe it? When I heard the announcement, you know, I was on the phone, you know, to some of my buddies, you know, Steve Cox and, and Kelly Beasley and, and all these guys going, hey guys, guess what? They'll know how good you are by what kind of pictures are hanging on the wall of your team or you. And we're hanging on the wall, our team's hanging on the wall, our pictures are on the wall, and we're going in the Hall of Fame. Right, wrong, or different, outside this university, I don't really care, but within the Blue family, that's my team. I'm proud to be a part of this university. And I mean, I am ecstatic to be a part of this Hall of Fame class going in and couldn't ask for anything better. I'm excited. I was really surprised when I found out. I thought they'd for, maybe forgotten about it because Tulsa's had some good teams since then. But this team is special to me and, and obviously I'm very proud of it.